I hope you're having a great day. Well, today we're going to talk about something very, very simple related to depression, anxiety, the way that we want to feel. You see, the innate nature of every human being is to want to feel happy, to feel blissful, to be in love, to receive attention, to receive validation and acknowledgement. These are the basic cravings of every human being. You come across human beings who say, these things are not important to me, I don't care what people think about me, and all of these things. That's just a cover, those are layers and those are masks that people start wearing because they've been hurt before and they don't want to be hurt again, so they wear these masks and these layers to protect themselves. But the innate nature of a human being is to want and crave love, attention, acknowledgement, care, and the basis of humans, which is basically kindness. Now in today's world, we have so many material things. We come across people all the time, and we may be some of those people who have all the material things in the world, but yet we feel empty inside. We don't feel content. We don't feel fulfilled. And we go on getting more and more material things, taking more and more holidays, adding more and more entertainment to our life, which is absolutely not wrong. It is absolutely not wrong. But if we're going on chasing these things and we still wake up every morning or we go to sleep every night feeling empty, feeling unfulfilled, feeling not content with what we have, there's a deeper problem that we have to look at. And because of this, we start getting lost in the chase of things which are elusive, which never really fills the void that we should be focusing on, which could be loneliness for some people, it could be toxic relationships for other people, it could be stuck in a bad job for other people, it just could be, you know, our own attitudes of not being able to recognize the things that we already have in life. And the biggest problem is when we compare ourselves with other people. Some of us have so much or so little, but yet so much. But because we're comparing ourselves with everyone around on social media, on television, on the virtual screen, in life, at work, and other people's relationships, you always feel that you have lesser and lesser, even though you really, really have sometimes more than the other person. And the irony of life is, the people who we think have everything are looking at other people's lives, trying to wish for the things that they don't have in their own lives. But when it comes down to the human mind, there's one thing that we need to understand, dopamine. What is dopamine? When we play a video game, we want to move from one level to another, and that's why it gets so addictive, because our dopamine keeps getting stimulated. We, st we keep creating this rush in our mind called dopamine. Why do kids get addicted to iPads and iPhones so quickly? Because with the, with the flick of a finger, they can move from one thing to another thing. There was this beautiful study done with a, with a test study group of children, where children were put through a virtual farm on an iPad, where they could look at animals and swipe from one animal to another in a virtual zoo, a virtual farm. These same group of children were taken to a farm, an actual farm, and within the first five minutes of being at the farm, they complained of being bored. They complained of being bored and they wanted to be taken back home or they wanted to do something more fun. You see, having all these things in our life is not an issue, but what it's creating is a problem of excessive dopamine. So today, if our brains can't be stimulated anymore because we constantly have stimulation from entertainment, television, video games, Netflix series, and all of these things. What happens when Netflix isn't in our life? What happens when I don't have a social event to go to? What happens when I have to sit at home with no event to go to? You start getting bored, you start getting restless, you start feeling slightly depressed, you start feeling that something is out of tune. Well, nothing's out of tune. That's actually how your normal life is supposed to be. But because there's nothing to stimulate your dopamine production, that's when we start moving to vices of more alcohol or drugs or more stimulation to keep the dopamine going. Dopamine works like, like a drug, which is why drugs are so addictive. Why are drugs so addictive? Because it stimulates dopamine production. So once you've done drugs once, second time, third time, nothing can replicate what the drug does by stimulating dopamine so rapidly and so quickly, so you get addicted to something that's giving you pleasure. So that's a different topic. Let's get straight into the solution mode. Today when we ask people that, why do you feel restless in your life? Why are you empty when you have so much? People say, I don't know. I don't know, I'm trying to do it. So some people go to the mountains to find peace. Some people start chanting. Some people get deeply rooted into meditation and all of that stuff, which is all good. But again, the simple question and the simple list that I encourage people to make is number one. I ask these people, if I had to ask you for three things right now that you can think of that will make you 
instantly happy. Instantly happy means in your heart. You know, sometimes when you think about something or you read something you, or you remember something, you refer to a memory, you have this warm feeling in your heart. It makes you bliss fully happy. Like right now, it's easy to be instantly happy. I'm just going to say, oh, I want to be in, in the Maldives and that's going to make me happy. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about this deep happiness in your heart. You know, sometimes you get a warm feeling in your heart when you think of something. It stimulates a hundred different emotions in you. Your cells vibrate with that emotion and you feel content. You feel fulfilled. The list that I encourage people to make, and believe me, it's a difficult list to make. If I ask you to make a list of the things that will make you happy right now, you fill up paper after paper. But if I ask you to fill a list with thoughts or memories or events in your life, that the moment you read it, something changes in you instantly. You can smile inside. You know, you can laugh because that event has triggered a memory and vice versa and all of that stuff. If I ask you right now to write down something that when you read it, you will immediately feel this deep happiness in your heart. Believe me, until you do this exercise, it seems to be very easy. But when you really sit down with a pen and paper to do this exercise, you'll find that you're struggling to pull up memories that actually make you feel this way because most of us don't think about them anymore. You know, this whole thing of taking pictures when you go on holidays and all this all the time, great. But there's enough of science to show you that the more pictures you take, you're missing the moment of what's really happening. We're all clicking pictures of sunsets instead of really enjoying the sunset. So what happens is you have that memory on your phone, but it's not in your heart or your mind anymore. And how many of us really go back to our phone and go back to our archives of pictures looking at them? If you're doing that, that's great because it can stimulate the same emotion that I'm talking about. But you should, you should, the most important list that we need to make today to improve our stress levels, to feel a little bit more content, this has nothing to do with gratitude. This is a separate list. If you can list down five or 10 powerful events in your life or memories in your life or things that people have said to you, that when you read it, it stimulates a whole flood of emotions in your cells and in your body. That list is your treasure. Because every time you feel low, every time you feel sad or you're depressed, believe me, you take that list out and you read through it and it starts changing the entire chemistry, biology and physiology of every cell in the human body. Which is why I tell people today the best investment that you can make is in memories. In memories, you can buy things today, lose those things, buy things again and all of that stuff. But when you create memories, good memories, which is why invest in travel, invest in travel where you create memories, invest in relationships where you can build memories. Relationships today have become so, you know, normal that the husband does the job, the wife does their job. They just have a duty of bringing up children, which is all fine. But if you can create memories, guess what? That memory list is what's going to help you feel good as you age, as you become a grandparent. You'll have things to look back at that makes you feel so good and takes away something deadly called loneliness. Loneliness is a disease that eats away young people, teenagers, the elderly people, adults, and everyone else. But you make this memory list or this happy list that I call it. It will take you time to come down with the most, most hard hitting memories that make you feel good inside. And when you feel low, you read this list. Now, believe me, some of you, the blessed ones, will be able to make this list really quickly. I've been struggling with this list for the last one month. I've got just four or five points on that list, which I intend to start increasing more and more because every time you read that list, something changes inside of you. You see, stress is real in our life. Problems are real. We can't get rid of most of the problems that we're in. So what comes in are how we change our attitude towards this. So I can have all the stress in the world, but I have this little list that connects with me. And I write down things, maybe a childhood experience, something that my parents told me, something that my lover told me, something that I did that made someone happy and it makes me feel good in my heart. You have these little instances written out so every time you read it, you change the physiology of your body. And that's how we address stress. It's not about getting rid of all our problems in life. It's impossible to do that. It's about how we can change the internal environment of our heart and mind by connecting with memories. Human beings connect through feelings. You could buy a Ferrari today or a diamond necklace. It'll give you that joy for the first one, two days, five days, 10 days, the next five days that people appreciate you and say, wow, it's beautiful. After that, it fades, fades into your life. It just becomes another thing. But a memory is something that you can constantly connect with, like a picture. You can constantly connect with a picture because it invokes thoughts and memories and human beings best connect through feelings. 
which are connected with memories and thoughts and happy instances in our life. So this is something that you may want to add to your life. Try making this list. It's difficult, like I said, for most people, but if you do it, you have an easy reference guide to when you're feeling low and then you start challenging yourself to build that list, which means you have the work of creating more happy memories, more happy events, or doing things that can lead you to a happy event and a happy memory. Have a great day, everyone. Have a great weekend. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.